the FNL Network Talk Show. All right, all right, here we are again, the FNL Talk Show. Hey, ladies, what's up? Hi, hey, Sean, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, Kat and Diana, and yes, I'm Sean. I'm figured I'd go into outer space for spooky Halloween. Are you guys ready I for Halloween? It. What was that? Are we ready for Halloween? Yes. Uh, I'm working all day tomorrow. Oh, so, are you? Anything yeah. related? Are you a zombie? I wish I was a zombie. I am going to a basketball game and that's all I can say. Okay, nice. <laughs> a basketball game back in the 70s. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can piece it together and work out where I'm gonna be. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm up to tomorrow. Fun. What about you, Diana? I am so ready for Halloween. Halloween is my holiday. Um, Friday night, I literally just dressed up in my apartment. Last night, I was at Danny Elfman at the Hollywood Bowl. And then tomorrow after work, I'm going to Disneyland, get on the rides, watch the Halloween parade. I am ready. <laughs> nice. Have you done the revamped, oh, but they call it Guardians of the Galaxy, the revamped yes. Tower of Terror? You like dropped like 20 times. Me and Rocco back in the day did a commercial for that. And it was like one drop, then three drops. And now when I last did it in Disneyland when I was in Anaheim for work, yeah, it's like 10 times. You're like, whoa, 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 but it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> they really take you for a ride on that one. True that. Literally. Thing, I have never been to Disneyland. Uh, I'm missing out, aren't I? I am missing are. out. <laughs> yeah, most uh, there's a faster rides at the Adventureland part of it. Um, I do like Disney World better, to be honest, because yeah. the people are nicer. Like in Disney World, I'd be like, oh, where's it's a small world, and some employees like. Let me take you. It's right past Tomorrowland, on the side of Frontierland. You're going to love it. And really, to cut lines, you might do this. At, like, Disneyland, I'm like, where is something? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're all like, I'm not being paid enough. It costs too much to live in L.A. F you, tourist. You know, <laughs> where I'm like, oh, I was like, that's not Mickey from Disney World. He was sweet. <laughs> so, anyway. That's my but that, is, that is so L.A., though. Like you ask someone something and they just like blank you. Like I asked some guy to help me blow up my car tires the other day because I I can't do it. I really can't. And he just looked at me and he walked off. And I was like, you you know you want to try and help a damsel in distress. All you're gonna do is like put some air and some tires. Um, but no. So Darn everyone's me. in a hurry, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I mean, I think you had some questions about other holidays, Kat, uh, that you wanted to, you know, put on out there, so. I have so many. Okay, so Thanksgiving is obviously a very American holiday, and we don't have it in the UK. We now celebrate Black Friday because it's become like a global shopping event, but I've always been puzzled about certain things about Thanksgiving, like why turkey, why not beef or ham? Why do you have green bean casserole? I think that's the weirdest dish ever. And mac and cheese and stuff with your turkey. I mean, in the UK, we have turkey at Christmas. And I know you guys do different meat at Christmas. But I want to know, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? What are the traditions? Are the side dishes like green bean casserole? Um, are they traditional? Where does, where does all that come from? Because I just worked out it was condensed to green beans and like crispy onions. And I'm just intrigued by the whole Thanksgiving because it's like the biggest holiday of the year. It's bigger than Christmas. Whereas at home, Christmas is the big event. So I just want everyone's thoughts and opinions, teach a British girl about Thanksgiving. So over to you, Sean, you can start. All right, why not? Um, well, I have very mixed reviews about Thanksgiving because you know, you're taught as a kid in school in the US, or at least my generation was, well, this is when, you know, the Indians and the pilgrims broke bread together. They shared a nice meal. You would like draw the outline of your hand to be like a little turkey because it's like an easy thing to do in school. And then, I don't know, a grade or two later, you're like, well, we actually did shoot most of the Native Americans, you know, then the ones we didn't shoot, we coughed on. And like two of them got a casino years later and Cher sung half breed. Woo! And then that's like history. And I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem like a nice holiday. They taught us how to farm in the new land. And their thanks was that we killed them. I was like, this isn't cool. Now, you know, so the history behind Thanksgiving, 
I have a little bit of an issue with, you know, if you really looked at it historically and what we're really celebrating. Now, the idea to be thankful, um, of course, is great. And the more, you know, we can be aware of our loved ones and celebrate with our loved ones and be around family, I think it's good. I think it's probably big in the U.S. because we like to eat. We're a fat country. You know, we've got the most obese people, like, pile it in, you know. Ah. Um, so that might be part of it. And I was a fat child. So to me, every day was Thanksgiving. I'd be like, I would never have a pie. This is yummy. <laughs> so I couldn't tell the difference between Thanksgiving and not, um, to be honest. And I think the green uh, bean casserole is just kind of something to save money and be cheap. And with the turkeys, essentially I heard that, you know, turkeys were the most abundant um, animal running around North America at the time. And so they took the tradition of the goose from England and then just switched it to a turkey on over here. And then actually Ben Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national bird instead of the oh, wow. bird. Yeah. You see, I didn't know any of that. I've been work trying to work out why it was just an American holiday. So I like the idea of giving thanks. I love the fact that you get together and you just celebrate your families, you celebrate your friends and you, you know, you're just thankful for the food on the table. You're thankful for the people in your life. But I never knew any history. So that's, that's kind of answered a few things. Diana, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Yeah, well, first off, I want to talk about this green bean casserole because I have never eaten a green bean casserole, let alone a casserole in my life. Um, I have no idea what the obsession, like on commercials, it's like the green bean casserole. I'm like, that sounds terrible. I've, I've <laughs> never had one. Um, a lot of what Sean said rings true for me too, that we were taught it was the Native Americans and the pilgrim eat, pilgrims eating together. And then we found out that it didn't actually go that way. And the pilgrims were actually horrible. So I like that the message of Thanksgiving has evolved into being thankful and being with your family or your friends. Like I'm not going home to my family for Thanksgiving this year. It's going to be the first Thanksgiving I haven't spent with my family. So I have some friends out here in LA that I'm going to spend with them. And it's like, they become your family out here, you know? Um, and then as far as being thankful for things, I remember because Sean kind of brought up a memory of when you draw the hand and you have the turkey in nursery school, they made us do that. And they made us go home and have our parents write what we were thankful for. And we all read it the next day uh, over a meal in nursery school. Well, Everyone's going on. I'm thankful for my family, this, that, mom, dad, on and on, the house. Do you know what mine said? Literally, you would open it up, and the only thing it said was, I'm thankful for Barbie dolls. That was hey, it. It all starts with Barbie. That bitch has everything. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. The I green was house, a the green car. She's got Ken. You know, so why not? <laughs> That's <laughs> what we're thankful for. <laughs> and the new I Barbie movie is supposedly going to be good, so we got to stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I never, I never understood Barbie. She couldn't stand up for a start because her feet were so small that she toppled over. <laughs> so, but yeah, I was more into kind of the action figures and all that sort of thing. I played my brother's toys. Um, not even sure I had a Barbie doll. Wow. I was, and now I'm like very girly, girly, and I love Barbie. I, my God, in real life, I would be Barbie. But back then, I was a total tomboy. And I didn't really change till I was, I'm going to say late teens, and I'm very late teens. So I was like climbing trees and riding motorbikes and all that sort of thing. Um, nothing girly girly. i um, got to ask, Black Friday, what is it? Where does it come from? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily a holiday. I think it's just commercial. You know what I mean? Because growing up, I saw it evolved. Like it was never what it was today. I remember my mom would set her alarm and if there was a deal she would want and she would go and she would be back by the end of the day and it was no big deal. And now it's like, you get all the emails like doorbusters at this time, like stores are opening now on Thanksgiving, which thankfully a lot of them have stopped that since the pandemic started. Cause it's important for retail workers to get to enjoy their holiday with their family too. But it's just turned into this, big national event where everyone wakes up really early in the morning or goes out during Thanksgiving dinner to try and get your supremely discounted TV. And it's kind of like, where do we draw the line between, you know, wanting to cash in on those deals, but not um, forgetting the meaning of Thanksgiving. 
Okay. So I always thought it was linked in some way, but it's not. I mean, to me, Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, Black Friday, it's kind of a bit about gluttony. You know, you have all these deals and you buy all this stuff that you don't need. It's like, there's a massive big TV. I just get that because I want a new TV and I'll get this and I'll get that because it's such a good deal. But it kind of, to me, it defeats the object of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it's just more so like we're kicking off the holiday shopping season and here's all the deals so you can get a jump start on your Christmas presents. But it's not like a a holiday. That's never why, because the kids here have school off for Thanksgiving and Black Friday. It was never that growing up. Like you had the Friday off and it was just like, here's a Friday off to recover from the holiday and have some extra time with your family. Okay. It's fascinating. There's always somebody who's like trampled on for that discount TV at Walmart Supercenter or whatever. You'll always see that one person who's like, no! And everybody's like jumping on them to try to rip it out of their dying hands. Yeah. You know, that's always entertaining on the news, although I don't know if I would necessarily want to partake. It's like the Hunger Games to get the best deal. Like, I, I don't really know. I mean, and when I was reading online, they said, well, it all kind of started with the stock market. So then when, you know, there weren't good returns, it was like black. Um, then they also said that there was rumors, but not true, that back in slavery days after Thanksgiving, they would sell slaves for less money. And that's how they got, I know, how insane is that? Uh, and then the last one is that it officially became known as a holiday in Philadelphia because it was football related right after Thanksgiving. And people would come in like all the riffraff to shoplift, commit crime. The cops couldn't have Thanksgiving off. So they called it Black Friday. Why do I you always go back to Philly? Switch it to Thursday? White Friday. Come on, have we not suffered enough as a culture? You know, just switch it to White Friday, Pink Friday. You know, come on. I mean, you know, it's like enough. Why does it have to be Black Friday? I don't know. It's like Phil, poor Philly sports fans, though. I'm a Flyers fan, and like literally, we can't do anything right, Philly sports fans. We always get such a bad rap. <laughs> They riot if they win or lose. I've been in Philly after like the Super Bowl. I'm yeah. like, you won. Why are you rioting? What's wrong with you people? I'm like, I, I don't get it. I'm like, well, thank God they won. Could you imagine the size of the riot if they lost? Yeah. I don't <laughs> it's the same in the UK with soccer. I mean, we have we have fights in the stands. And people, obviously, we are quite a culture that likes to drink a lot. There's, you know, people be watching the games in the pub and they'll break out into a fight and... It's just, it's insane. And they just, it's kind of barbaric. But Sean, I can't believe the slave thing. That's kind of really disgusted me. Yeah, so, I saw it on factoids, just, but it's not proven exactly true or not. But I mean, how it all like got its, you know, name and so forth. And it is weird that like, you know, why, even if you look at Westerns, why is the villain with a black hat? and you know, the heroes with the white hat. It's like just something that we've done racially, like with a lot of our stuff. And I don't know how it, you know, it doesn't necessarily fit as the negative connotation for a sale, I don't think, um, but it is weird where it may have stemmed from and where the connotations may have originated. Yeah, I mean, uh, Britain, we can't preach about stuff because we have done a lot of horrible, bad stuff. Um, and I think we were heavily involved in the slave trade too. Um, yeah. Meghan Markle, you know, like still had issues, you know, so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's mind blowing. So I just want to know a couple more things. So if you're cooking Thanksgiving dinner, what would your, what would your sides be? And why is it pumpkin pie? Why pumpkin pie? I have so many questions about Thanksgiving. <laughs> I would go I'm with guessing, seasonal as well. Yeah. yeah, I guess pumpkin pie just because it's a seasonal fruit. Pumpkin's a fruit. That's a really dumb question. Pumpkin's a fruit, right? Uh, I guess because it has seeds in it. So I would make it a fruit, but pumpkin seasonal, all is out this time of year. Um, so my side dishes are a little bit different than everyone else's just because I am in an Italian American family and I got ripped apart one year. Like I posted on my jobs, like I work for radio. I posted on our Facebook page, do you do bread or rice stuffing? And everyone's like, what's rice stuffing? Who makes rice stuffing? And like, the traditional, like the Italian American way of doing it, instead of it being bread, it's it's rice, it's grated cheese, there's egg in it, and then my mom puts sausage in it. I don't eat meat, so she leaves the sausage out of mine, but it's delicious, like the best thing ever. So that's something we look forward to. We do the cranberry sauce. I don't like it because we get the one that comes out of the can, and I'm like, Ugh, like <laughs> I, I don't like things that retain their shape. That's kind of weird. Um, what else do we make? We do. 
green beans, not in a casserole. Um, she'll do like the green beans and she'll take breadcrumbs, uh, like heat it up in a pan, olive oil, grated cheese, breadcrumbs, that's delicious. Stuffed mushrooms, also really good. My mom's the best cook. Like you guys want to come over for Thanksgiving. I'm sure she'd love to have you. Nice. I love it. And how about you, Sean? What? Well, you know, my parents had gotten divorced and, and so it was easier for my mom and we would go to like a local country club for their buffet. And then we would just, it would be very funny. Like there was another family from school and they weren't half as big of pigs as me and my mother. So I remember like we got there first and we were still eating when they were leaving because we're like, why not? One more dessert. Why not? Have another piece of duck. Why not? Some more shrimp. And so we just kept going and going and going. So it's kind of like our gluttonous holiday. Um, if I was to order side somewhere, I'd probably go with like asparagus or Brussels sprouts. I don't cook well. I was on Worst Cooks in America. So now with the pandemic, I learned how to use a skillet a little bit in an air fryer, but I don't think that's going to do so well on Thanksgiving. So, you know, and I want to try turducken. That's on my to-do. So I've never had a turducken. Okay, so Thanksgiving, although it's turkey, it's very different from the British um, Christmas meal because we obviously have turkey. We have like roast potatoes, roast parsnip. We have carrots, peas. Um, our stuffing is like sage and onion normally. Sometimes there is meat in it. Um, but we are very, we do like broccoli. We always do the Brussels sprouts. You just hope they aren't boiled because they're disgusting boiled. But yeah, we're very much, you know, meat, vegetables, and then your potato. It's very, I guess that was Britain. It used to be, you know, meat, a couple of vegetables, potato, and that, that's kind of the diet. Um, but it's very different from yours with, yeah, the green bean casserole. I still can't get my head around that. I just think, oh no, is there something wrong about it? It's not a thing. It's adding fat. It's just adding fat. It's just like when you go to a steakhouse and you order spinach, it's like cream spinach. So you put, you know, a pound of cheese on something. And then of course, whoever normally doesn't like vegetables is going to be like, this is good. <laughs> you know, so I think it was a way to force people to eat their veggies in the U.S. I don't know. Okay. Well, I've learned a lot about Thanksgiving because I had no idea where the holiday came from. Like, obviously, I've just always had all these questions. And I've never really asked them about why you have certain sides and stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you, guys. Good. Yeah, I didn't I want to have to call immigration on you, Kat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> he doesn't get Thanksgiving. Call ICE. I'm kidding. I'm good for another two and a half years. Yeah. And then we'll see. I need to find a husband by then. Um <laughs> I mean, I'm not bothered about the husband. I just all three of us. Hey, we're really starting hard. this right now. Who would you like to marry? Would you like Diana? Would you like Kat? Would you like Sean? <laughs> show. <laughs> I just go eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and whoever you wants to go fund me. You know, go uh, find uh, me. I'll go find me a hubby. You know, like how much money do you got? Like, let's see the ticker talk. Oh, Kat's up to two million. <laughs> you know, oh no, I'm minus ten. <laughs> Diana's. <laughs> Plus a oh, we should do an auction. We should like yeah. auction ourselves off to the highest bidder. Oh my god. <laughs> People have done that. I've read like, you know, a woman auctioned off her virginity. I don't know if she went through with it or whatever. Yeah, back in the day. But yeah. there we go. I can auction myself off as a wife. I can cook. I love cleaning. What more do you want? God bless. Whatever you floats your boat. <laughs> how rude <laughs> i'm like the perfect stepford housewife you know what i mean probably not good for much else but yeah i can cook and i can clean <laughs> oh and diana i think you want to talk about what was going on with the celebrity world is that yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of marriage and all that so we have yeah another celebrity divorce tom brady giselle bunchen after 13 years of marriage and some separation rumors, they finally made things official and filed for divorce. So what I want to know from both of you is what, what is it that you think that celebrities can't stay together, especially uh, Tom Brady's an athlete, and I feel like athletes get a reputation that's harder for them to stay married. And do you think that TMZ, all these outlets, should be reporting on divorces? Because if your neighbors down the street got divorced, like they're not coming to your door and being like, hi, we just separated. Like you just see like, oh, Nancy's not with Joe anymore. I guess they're not together. But whenever a celebrity puts in the paperwork to get divorced, it's big news. We all get the alerts on our phones. So Kat, what are your thoughts? 
Well, you know, I love celebrity and I love all the gossip. And I think if you put yourself out there in the media or whatever, um, and you become a celebrity, then unfortunately a piece of your life is owned. And I think, yeah, I think people are interested. Um, I think, who knows what happened behind closed doors, but you know, Tom Brady, he is an athlete. He might be, what, mid to late forties now, but he's still doing so well in the FNL, in the FNL, in the- (laughs) (laughs) He'll be here next week, everybody, stay tuned. In the the NFL, get it right, Pat, get it right. And I think, you know, for him to give up, that's part of who he is. He is an athlete. Who is he without football, you know? He loves it, he's passionate about it. It's part of who he is. And I think if you're married to someone like that, you have to accept that part of them, that that's his, he's going to do that career and he's going to be passionate about it until he can no longer do it, you know, and then perhaps he might go into coaching. Um, I do think if someone is, you know, traveling a lot, um, it is difficult if you've got a family, but you know what you're signing up for. You do, you know, the person's profession. Um, and it's unfortunate they've split up. I love them as a couple. They're, they're beautiful. And those kids are going to be like the most stunning kids ever. Um, I think it's good that they've divorced very quickly and they've worked out a settlement and they're all about the kids and they're working together and they're keeping it amicable. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it hasn't worked for them. I'm going to say watch this space though, because I, I would like to see them get back together. And I'm going to say, I don't think it's over till the fat lady sings. And this is celebrity. And everything can happen so quickly in the world of celebrity. You know, they're married one minute, divorced the next, on to the next, you know, marriage and five, six, seven marriages. It's kind of normal. But I would like to see them go back together. I really would. I love them as a couple. I think they're great. Um, But what was going on behind closed doors, if it was him still doing football and it being dangerous, I don't think that's a strong enough reason. And that's what we're being told in the media. So I am so biased against Tom Brady having grown up in New York and my dad is a Giants fan and it's always like Tom Brady won another Super Bowl and I'm like oh I hate you um it's just Uh almost like when do we I don't know when do we stop praising him as a society I'm not even a huge football fan but if uh last year I went to a bar down the road with my friend and football game was on and it was Tom Brady's first game with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against his old team, the Patriots. And you know, when you're watching a football game and they do the player stats and it's like a silhouette of them or whatever, like a them versus the other person, it's two quarterbacks and they compare stats or whatever. They literally compared Tom Brady against Tom Brady with the Patriots and the Buccaneers. And I'm like, (laughs) does he own the NFL now? Like, why are we as a country like, kissing up to this man it just blows my mind so the long and short of all that was I don't like him and also I'm not surprised that football is the reason that their marriage fell apart because I feel like he doesn't know when to hang it up like how many Super Bowls are enough for you yes you're talented but you're 45 like not that that's old but like you've won so many things you've had a fulfilling career at what point do you think it's time to turn it over from the career to your family? Well, and do we really know where his balls have been? Like clearly <laughs> they've been on many fields, you know, I'm sure he's, he's seen fields that have been mowed, some <laughs> fields that are natural, you know, and I think maybe Giselle was like, oh no, his ball's in another field. Maybe it was deflated, like that one game where, you know, he said he had a deflated <laughs> ball. You know, you don't know. And maybe Giselle wanted a strong non-deflated ball. I think it has to do with balls really at the end and where his balls have been and how deflated or deflated they've been. But I feel so for anybody getting a divorce and i mean i think you know it's probably harder in the public eye because you have more scrutiny and so if your stuff isn't really together i think you know the media can you know help draw you apart because they like the tensions and you know everybody likes kind of like i think a soap opera like you know beautiful people are together but they can't be happy that's like always the formula for soap operas like they get married and then there's a bomb in the cake (laughs) because it was like nobody can have it all you know like i think there's too much jealousy within human nature so that's why you know we kind of like to see build up heroes and then also knock them down which i think is a little bit you know harder if you're that person yeah Hashtag it's all about balls, though. 
I well, yeah, I mean, come on. Any guy, like if somebody's throwing themselves all the time at you, you think he's been faithful? I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, even Clinton, who looked like W.C. Fields. I mean, you know, when somebody's always like throwing it in the face, very rarely is a guy strong enough to say no. So That's I think fair. Giselle's just hopping her way to somebody else, you know? So. Yeah, I want to say, you know, in the UK, obviously we're soccer. They all play away. There's, you know, for example, David Beckham, how many affairs has he allegedly had? Um, it's, it's everywhere and I don't know, it's, hmm, who knows, who knows if he was faithful, if he wasn't faithful, I'm going to say, yeah, he probably was, uh, let's just say playing the field in all areas, football, on and off the football field, so. Yeah, I could never date an athlete, sorry for all you athletes watching, it's not going to work. <laughs> I could. I just want the reality show. So feel free to call me. Keep that bidding going <laughs> on our Go Find Me page. <laughs> you know, just keep the numbers raising. I'm open. I'm open for like throwing balls in new fields. Why not? Well, I would have an athlete because you know you want to wake up in the morning, you want to roll over and go, yeah, I've done damn well for myself. But I would never date a musician. Never again. Never, 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 never. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. Not going back. So Super sorry. Fair. Even if Harry Styles comes my way, sorry, Harry. Sorry, I think you're great, but no. All right. I'll treat you, you my know. athletes for your musicians. There you go. <laughs> okay, See, you're that's stage it. Program. <laughs> See, I'll take anybody to the polls. Like, cat prefers balls over horns. Who knew? I mean, so you just, we all have our preferences, people, you know? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a fact of life. We're basically animals, uh, whether or not we're meant to be with one person, I don't know. I don't know. Are we meant to be with one person? Are we not meant to be with one person? I mean, dogs, they, they're they not faithful, are they? Are we better than a dog? Don't think so. I'm not saying that everyone should be like throwing themselves into every bed that comes their way. But I think the realism is you grow, you grow apart. You know, even if you're like married, you can start off going in the same direction. But, you know, life changes people. And is it going to keep working so you've either got to grow together and stay on that path together or you're going to go like that because we change and what's right now for you is not right for you in like five years time so I never want to get married apart from the green card people um yeah. I just yeah it's not for me not for me at all Interesting. so yeah, I, I, to me, I just think it's when you meet, you know, you can meet the right person at the wrong time. I think a lot of it is timing. And then I think it's work, you know, because yes, your interests may not grow together or then it all becomes consumed for people with the kids or something else. And then you lose track of each other. So I think, you know, in order to have a successful relationship, you have to put the time in. And, you know, that's where I think a lot of people just either don't put that dedication or time in and then things slowly grow apart. Mm -hmm. you know? Some people stick yeah. with it and some people don't, you know. I think it's also to, good to have your own space. So I think some people have got it right. They have different houses next door to each other from their partner. And I think the Beckhams there, uh, Cotswold house, they have a different wing each and there's a kitchen in each wing and a living room in each wing. And they have their separate time too. And I think that's great. I think you've got to appreciate your own time and then appreciate your together time. Um, so yeah, if I do get married, it's gotta be a rich guy with a mansion and I'll have my area, they can have their area. That doesn't sound bad. I support that, you know? Yeah, let's get you your own Downton Abbey. I'm, I'm all for it, you know? <laughs> Let the auction begin. <laughs> yes. And let's see if you stay faithful with the staff. Hmm, <laughs> I'm kidding. But are they good looking staff? Are they, that's, I'm sorry, I'm like bit, all about looks. <laughs> this is why my relationships go very wrong. So I pick people for the wrong reasons. Um, yeah. It happens. Well, let's it's see. Like, do I'm vain in everyday life, but I also, I just, I just want a piece of arm totty. That's what I want, some arm totty. An so, arm totty? Totty. totty. Basically, arm candy. Totty. If you've got a piece of, I, am I teaching you a new English phrase? A totty, okay. yeah. So totty is basically like arm it's candy. Totty. It's your, your bit of um, scrumptious that you, you have on your arm. Oh. Something yeah, to give it a little bit of a totty. Mm. So if you're walking down the street and you you see a good looking girl, oh she's a, she is a great piece of totty, you know. A piece of totty. Oh, oh yeah. But you know what we're we're like in the UK. I mean, I, 
you call like girls birds. What? Did, you, did you not know that? I mean, we talk about my bird and it's like my girl, my bird. Huh. I'm teaching you guys quite a lot today. Interesting. Do they put people in cages? Is it like Fifty Shades of England? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <I'm> my bird. <laughs> Yes, I mean, my ah, bird. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's hot. Or my chick, my chick, my bird. Wow. So there you go. You learned something new. I guess so. Well, for Halloween, since it's coming up, I wanted to see, I was going to take a little bit more, I guess I'll start with a serious twist. Like if you have any fears, like, you know, so it's, is it snakes? Is it like, you know, surprises, the unknown? I, I'm sure it's not us, but most people are speaking in public. Um, and when I thought about it, what I realized is probably, you know, a true fear of mine is, you know, my mom's getting older and whenever she has health concerns because it's out of my control. And, you know, just as a slightly funny story because of my crazy sense of humor, um, my mother a few years ago had a heart attack and they had to take her in to see if she needed a stint or something placed in her heart. So I could tell by looking at her, um, you know, and she was around 70, that she was nervous, you know, going in. So I look at my mom and I'm like, mom, if you go in and you see a light, don't go into it. Run away. Run away from the light. And the nurse was so freaked out, she dropped her clipboard. <laughs> so I scared the heck out of the nurse, but it made my mom laugh. And that's like really what I was going for, to like ease her nerves before going in for like a procedure. And it all worked out in her favor and she didn't need anything as it turns out. But I realized like, you know, things out of my control, like the health of a loved one, is probably something that would genuinely be fearful to me because I feel like I'm almost powerless in that type of circumstance. And do you ladies have any fears this Halloween season? I have um, white coat syndrome, which <laughs> is anytime you go to the doctor, your blood pressure gets elevated. Um, I, it's taken a lot, I've worked on it. There was a time I would not get any needles. Like I went 15 years without getting a blood test, which is oh, really wow. bad for your health. Um, so finally I chopped up the nerve and I got my blood test. And then after that, I got a bunch of piercings and tattoos. I do fine with those, but anytime a doctor wants to bring out a needle, I've gotten my COVID vaccine, still freak out every time I go for a needle. I just can't do it. And I don't know if it's because I, I don't like the pain, but then I also don't like the medical um, surrounding of it. Like when they tape your arm up with a tourniquet, I'm like, Ugh, like, I can't deal with that. It grosses me out. And also knowing you're about to get results, like knock on wood, everything's been fine, but like it only takes one time to find out there's something seriously wrong. And I know it's with the objective to, you know, stop that and to help you, but that's a little scary. So anytime I go to the doctor, it's just freak out city for me. I want to know if you're scared of needles, how'd you get Botox? You know, I feel like there's a bit of a reward with that, if you will. It's almost like when you go get a piercing or you go get a tattoo, it's like, oh, I'm going to have this really cool piece of jewelry or I'm going to have this art on me forever. How cool is that? And Botox is like, my face is going to look snatched. Like, oh, yeah. And then it's like with the blood test, it's like, oh, I'm about to get some results. And like my stomach <laughs> never hurt until I find them out. So I think that has to do with it. That's interesting because I also, um, I have a thing about doctors, but like a, a GP doctor. Yeah. Um, and I, I've never ever had my pap smear. Don't want it. Don't want to know. I'm not scared of having it done. I just see no reason to have it done. I, I'm like that. I'm a doctor's daughter. I hate going to the doctor because uh, just because they always like, you know, want to weigh you and stuff like that. And obviously I had a bad experience with anorexia and doctors and stuff like that. And I won't go to a doctor now. I'll go to the plastic surgeon. I love plastic surgeons. And I'm very happy to go and have like surgery done. And, you know, like I've been open and honest, I've had work done. Um, I'm all for that. I want more stuff done, but I hate the doctor. I can be on my deathbed and I will not go to the doctor. So, and it's just... I just don't want to know. I've had a bad experience with them. I don't like them and I don't, don't want to go. And apart from that, I have a real fear of not growing old, but of lines and wrinkles and aging. I have literally, I have this phobia about, I don't know, looking older. 
I have just such a like really like if I had unlimited money my god I would be like Michael Jackson I'll be getting this done I'll be getting that done um because I have I have a phobia of like lines and wrinkles. I freak out when I can move my 11 lines. Uh, and that's like a real phobia I have. I'm not scared of much else. I'm not scared of heights. I'm not scared of like insects. I'm not scared of spiders, snakes. I don't mind it. Animals don't mind them. Um, but yeah, lines and wrinkles. I'm scared of lines and wrinkles. That's an odd one, but I am. Well, it's a hard one because I mean, I don't think there's easy alternatives. Like you could look at somebody like Jane Fonda who's had great work but you can still see that it's work, you know, and it's not a natural aging process. And then somebody who maybe like progressively along the way, like say JLo, you know, she looks as good now, if not better than when she began or Demi Moore, and they did a lot of work. But really, I think when you're 70, how good can you look, you know, really? Like either you're gonna look wrinkled or you're gonna look scared and surprised and pulled. I don't think, you know, unless we come up with some new technologies, I'm like, girl, embrace some of those lines because I don't know what else you're gonna do. You know, because even Joan Rivers, she looked interesting. She didn't necessarily look pretty, you know, because surgery can only do so much. You can't take 70 to 20, you know? I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. the thing. It's dealing with what you already have. And of course you both are beautiful ladies, but you know, I wouldn't, you know, worry about a wrinkle because eventually it's gonna happen. Yeah. But you have so much technology now. You have all the radio frequency, the radio frequency microneedling. There is so much stuff you can do to keep yourself looking as good as possible for as long as possible. I mean, like Kim Kardashian, she looks amazing for 42. And then, you know, you've got celebrities in their 50s, 60s. They look great. And I'm all for Sharon Osbourne having a facelift after facelift. I think that's great. So, because, yeah, you are going to eventually start looking older. But I think you can do a lot to prevent it. But... That that's me. I just I have a phobia about it. I don't mind being like, well, I don't want to get to seventy. I don't want to be like old and incontinent and stuff like that. I don't see myself getting there. Oh. Well, hopefully but, you know, you'd be a healthy seventy. I mean, the only thing I think is kind of funny is sometimes I've seen people with like work on like the Upper East, Upper West, and you know they have these like little old snake eyes, but the rest of the face has been pulled back. So it's just you can just kind of tell like you know one of these things is not like the other. It doesn't quite fit. You hands know, and so neck. that's the only thing. It's all balance, I think. Yeah, hands and neck are a dead giveaway. Yeah, micro needle your hands, peels. You can do a lot. I swear. <laughs> See, with, uh, gloves and Vaseline um but yeah I mean mine mine probably comes my fear of that probably comes down to body dysmorphia because I do have that but it's just I have just this phobia about it and I also I don't like mirrors don't like mirrors at all because they play with my mind um so that that just jumps into my mind um but yeah I have a fear of mirrors Maybe I used to have a fear of, huh Maybe you're a vampire cat. <laughs> Maybe. You know, I'm old. I, it's all connecting the dots right now. You get sick from eating fake beef and you don't like mirrors. How do you I feel about garlic? Like I'm yeah. not afraid about what? Frog's legs. Garlic. Are you afraid of garlic? See? The Italian. No. Good question. Good question. Good question. I quite like blood. I mean, I've had the vampire facial. I don't mind having blood taken for that. I probably it's am. I should be like that's a vampire. I mean, I, my skin's pale enough to be a vampire. Perhaps I am. I'm a vampire. But, that detective um, work on. <laughs> yes. You know, it all came together on this special Halloween episode. I knew it would. All right. Any final thoughts, ladies, for Halloween or anything else, or upcoming Thanksgiving, or any other holidays we might object to? Um, I don't know. I mean, I know, like. Christmas and stuff, it's a time where, or just basically the holiday season from Thanksgiving till Christmas, it's all about families and stuff and being together. How do you feel about Christmas? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, what are your thoughts on it? I love Christmas. Um, in the Italian culture, which I'm finding out, it's also big in the Latino culture too. Christmas Eve is actually the bigger deal than Christmas. So we go to my cousin's house um, back on Staten Island and we do the Feast of the Seven Fishes. I'm vegetarian, so I don't eat any of it. So, but I just am so amazed by all the work that goes into putting on that meal, seven different kinds of fish. And 
we play something called the saran wrap game. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it on Pinterest, but it's become like a Christmas tradition now. Every year someone makes the saran wrap ball and it's, you go and you buy just regular saran wrap and prizes. So you go to five below, you'll get like earbuds, you'll get soaps, chapstick, we'll throw money in there and you roll it up into a big saran wrap ball and everyone has oven mitts and one person next to you has dice. And they have to keep rolling the dice and whoever gets doubles like if you get doubles then you have to pass the mitts and the, the ball to the next person and whatever you try to unwrap with that the mitts on and you get a prize like that's yours to keep and as you keep going into the ball like the prizes get better and better so like the goal is you want to end up with the best prize but it's just funny because you're watching like Grown adults, some of us are drunk, some of us are not, like, trying to struggle. We look like a cat playing with, like, a yarn ball, trying to get the prizes out. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. Uh, as a kid, like, birthday parties, we used to play Pass the Parcel, and it was the same as your um, Glad Wrap Ball or whatever. <laughs> but it would be actual, like, wrapping paper, so you'd do your layer, and, you know, the outside prizes would be sweets and stuff. And we also had, like, this other game, so... It was where you would wear oven mitts. You would have like a, a blindfold on. You'd have to throw dice. And um, like if you rolled a six, then you got to chop this giant um, block of chocolate. But you had your oven mitts on and you had to like try and chop the chocolate. It probably wouldn't be allowed now because you have knives and stuff. And it was like a small kids game. But, you know, it was it was great it really really was great so it sounds like a combination of those two kids games yeah so. kids with knives and gloves on it sounds like the original planned parenthood <laughs> like they're like oh we shouldn't have the seven kids oh well hey guys we're gonna play a game <laughs> bring out all the kids <laughs> i don't know oh my god luck of the draw yeah exactly oh we lost susie oh well i have i have one question obviously you've told me that the the Feast of the Seven Fishes is seven yeah. different types of fish. Where did, what is the tradition behind that? I've never heard of it. I don't know exactly. All I know, it has to do something like on Christmas Eve, we can't eat meat. Um, it has to do something with Jesus. I'm the worst Catholic ever. Um, so it has to do something with Jesus. And <laughs> there, I think there was also a story about like the wise men and bringing gifts or whatever. I Googled it. <laughs> I'm the worst Catholic. Like, I, I am so sorry, Roman Catholics everywhere. I am doing a disservice to you. But it's got something to do with Jesus and the wise men and fish and gifts. I think it was the fishes and the loaves where he multiplied for the crowd that they didn't have, you know, enough to eat and enough food. And then Catholicism. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Because I know that that was, like, after Jesus got older and Christmas was about, like, the birth of Jesus. I don't know. But I think they combined even like no meat on Fridays. Like, yeah. for I mean, why did Jesus all of a sudden hate me? You know, I mean, I think like when he put a demon in a pig, it was because like, if you didn't cook pork right, you died. And like the whole rule, like don't eat bad shellfish because you can still die. And there's still warnings at like your local sushi buffet. I think yeah. a lot of it was like practical. Um, but I do love, like, you know, I don't know, I'm an only child. I, my birthday was in December. And I love the whole idea of a little baby getting tons of gifts. So I love little baby Jesus. Like, he's my favorite Jesus because he's magical. They're all excited he's there. People want to give him gold. They want to give him frankincense. I think your saran wrap came because of that crappy gift myrrh. I don't even know what the hell myrrh is. I don't want it. Uh, you know, at least frankincense, you can burn it. Gold, you can spend it. Myrrh, I mean, that was the cheap wise men, you know, <laughs> like out of the wise men family. He was the cheapest one he got the myrrh so i think that's how maybe that ball started i don't know but yeah. uh, i like christmas i mean i like the whole idea of giving and gifts you know santa thrown in i don't know we have a few things combined but kids seem to like it so why not we used to do the nativity plays at school you know where you tell the story of the mary and joseph and the nice. well, they, they were in a stable weren't they and then obviously yeah, yeah. kings came to visit and we used to have to do that every single year at school. We put on a play about that. We didn't have to do that in school because of like separation of church and state. But if you went to a Catholic school, then yeah, that's what you did. But like in public schools, we learned about everyone's holidays, uh, which was really neat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm from where I'm from in the UK. It's 
there's a massive, massive Indian population. I think like Leicester itself, the city is, I think it's like 52% Indian. So there's more Indian than there is, a, a, I'm gonna say original British people, uh, cause they obviously are British people. And so, yeah, we learned all about Muslims. We learned about Hindu. We learned about all the religions because, you know, I went to school and it was, there was a lot of Indian kids and stuff and we learned about it all because it was, you know, so it was, it's good. I liked learning about stuff like that. And but you know what I think the hardest is, is probably for Joseph, because can you imagine you come home, honey, I'm, you know, with child and be like, but we didn't do anything, Mary. It's like, oh, well, it's God's. Sure, it's God's, Mary. You know, and he didn't leave her. He stuck with it. He could have been. Maybe this is what happened with Tom Brady and Giselle. Maybe there was, you know, some sort of birth that they weren't predicting. I don't know. They had more than a manger. They had a mansion. I don't know. Maybe we can connect the dots between Christmas yeah. and Christmas. And like Joseph's walking all over Jerusalem with Mary. And he's like, like she's where is this God? Bring him. Bring him. You know? I just feel sorry for the poor donkey that's carrying everything. Poor little ass, yeah. Mm. What can you do? All right. Well, I think we covered all the holidays, all for Halloween. So, you know, love talking to you, ladies. Nice officially meeting you, Diana. Yeah, nice yeah, to meet you, too. Always so fun. Fun. <laughs> yeah. And feel free to, you know, go find me, at least a husband, as we started on earlier in the show, you know. You can never be too rich. That's what I say. And, and you can never lower your standards too much. Call me. I want, he wants good looking. He wants rich. There we go. We can start auditioning for you. We can start auditioning for you. Perfect. Happy Halloween, everybody. Oh.